hello, hello. This is the first of a two-part video explaining um, ions and how elements can form bonds once they've become ions and they've either lost or gained electrons. So please be sure that you not only watch this video and take notes, but you also watch the second video and get the second half of your notes before we come to class. Um, and that way we can get some practice and everything. We don't have to waste class time by reviewing the same information again. So when we talk about bonding, there are two different types of bonding. Um, there's ionic and co covalent. We're going to talk about covalent later on in the week. Ionic bonding is when atoms react and they form chemically stable substances and they're held together by chemical bonds. So the chemically stable substances means that they end up having all of the electrons that they need in order to fill their um, outer orbital. Atoms can gain, lose, or share electrons in order to get eight total valence electrons. So gaining and losing electrons means that they become ions, and sharing electrons is what we'll talk about later with covalent bonding. Another word for covalent bonding is molecular, so you see that there in the third bullet point. So just to review what an ion is, it's an atom or a group of atoms that have become electrically charged. And the way this happens is they either lose an electron or they gain an electron. And the way that we are going to write ions out is we'll have the element symbol and then you'll have a superscript. So that means you're writing it above the normal line that you write on. And it'll be a little smaller. And you'll see a plus or minus sign along with a number. And the plus or minus sign means that there is a charge. So for example, we've got K with a plus one charge. That means potassium has a positive one charge overall. Then you've got Cl minus one and Mg plus two. Cl is chlorine, Mg is magnesium. And hopefully you're studying for these element quizzes that are coming up. And these are some of the ones you have to know. So valence electrons... Um, just to review, those are the ones on the outermost shell of an atom. These are the ones that are involved in chemical bonding. So they're kind of the most important electrons that we deal with when we discuss the Bohr model of the atom. So we get an ion again when an atom loses or gains the valence electrons. So an atom has a neutral charge when we look at it on the periodic table. And if it gains the electrons, then it has an overall negative charge because the electrons have a negative charge themselves. So if I gain two electrons, it would have a negative two charge. If I gain three electrons, it would be negative three, and so on. If a neutral atom loses these electrons, then we would have more protons than electrons. Remember, protons have a positive charge, so the overall charge of the atom would then be positive. So remember that element position on the periodic table and their group number directly relate to how many valence electrons they have. Um, when we skip transition metals, remember the transition metals are the weird ones that depend on the situation. So we're going to ignore those guys for right now. Um, but let's look at silicon. I want you to look at your agenda or um, if you have a periodic table on the computer you can look at. Um, silicon, if you can find it, is located in the 14th group. And so what it's going to do is the whole idea here, These all these elements really want to be like the noble gases. They want to have a full ring of valence electrons, just like the noble gases do. Remember, noble gases don't react with anything because they have everything they need. And so silicon, because it's in group 14, because of its position, it loses four electrons. And so if it does that, it resembles the element that's four spaces in front of it on the periodic table. And we'll see a visual of this in just a few minutes. Because it loses four electrons, it has four more protons than electrons overall. And that positive charge for protons means that silicon would have a plus four charge as an ion. Now oxygen is kind of close to the noble gases when we look at where it is on the periodic table. It's in group 16. Six, group 16 elements have six valence electrons, and all they need to have is two more electrons to be like the noble gases. So because of that, oxygen would need to gain two electrons to resemble the noble gas, and when it gains two of those negative charges overall, it would have a negative two charge. So that's why we write it the way we do there. So what we're going to do is identify these charges. We're going to find each of these elements and figure out where they're located 
and how they can be like the noble gases. So if you can find lithium, it's in the first group, the alkali metals. And so we can decide if you go to the right, and we're just going to hop on each box to the right. If you count to the right, you'd see beryllium and boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. So if I count how many steps that would take, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps to the right to be like neon in terms of how many electrons it has. So it could gain seven, or it could go backwards, because remember they could gain or lose electrons. It could lose one electron and be like helium. So the easiest thing to do, like the shorter path to take, would be to lose one electron. So remember, if I have a set the same number of protons and electrons and I lose one electron, I now have more protons. And I have one more proton. So overall, lithium would have a plus one charge. Now, magnesium is the next one. And if you can take a second to find magnesium, it's here in group two. Okay, so this is kind of like when we were hopping around with our decimal and converting the metric system units. So we can look at magnesium and see how it can be like a noble gas here. It could either gain one, two, three, four, five, six electrons to be like argon, or it could lose one, two electrons and be like neon. So again, you have to ask yourself which one of these is the shorter path. Clearly, it would be easier for it to just lose two electrons. If I get rid of two negative charges, I now have two more positive charges, and that's why it would be a plus two charge. Let's see if I can erase these so we can move on. All right, while I'm erasing it, you need to find aluminum. Hopefully, you've done that now. Aluminum here is in group 13. Okay, so again, we're going to ask ourselves which would be faster to gain or to lose electrons. So we could either gain one, two, three, four, five electrons. So we would have the same number of electrons as argon and have a full shell. Or it could lose one, two, three electrons and be like neon and have a full shell. So you should be able to tell it would be faster or easier for it to lose three electrons. And if it loses three negatives, I now have three more positives, so I'm going to have a plus three charge. Okay, now phosphorus is here in group 15. So here's where we're starting. So phosphorus could gain one, two, three electrons, because right now it's in group 15. It has five valence electrons, and if it's in group 18, it would have eight. So it could gain three and be like argon, or it could lose one, two, three, four, five, and be like neon. So at this point, we're closer on the side of gaining electrons. Now, if I bring in three negatives, then that means my overall charge is going to be negative three. Okay, again, I'm going to erase all these tracks, and while I'm doing that, I want you to find oxygen, either on your own periodic table or on this one on the slide. Now, oxygen is here in group 16. It has six valence electrons as a natural element, now it has an option of either gaining two to look like neon, or it could lose one, two, three, four, five, six electrons, and it could look like helium when we draw up the Bohr model. So here it would be easier for us to gain two negative charges or two electrons, so our overall charge would be negative two. Our final example here is bromine, and this one is in the halogen group, group 17. It's right next to the noble gases. It could gain one electron to look like krypton. Or it could lose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and look like argon. It would really clearly be easier to just gain one electron and look like krypton when we draw out the Bohr model. Oops, I shouldn't have done a plus sign. Sometimes we make mistakes too. So um, it should be a negative one charge if I'm bringing just one electron in. Okay, and we're going to do a ton of practice with this in class on Monday. So if you're not quite sure how we're doing this, please come in with questions and we'll review this information. All right, so finally, sometimes we have ions that are made up of more than one atom, but they together act like just one atom, and this is called polyatomic. Looking at the word polyatomic, this beginning part, poly, you may have seen it before in polygon, and you should know that this root word poly means multiple more than one. Okay, and obviously atomic is talking about atoms, so multiple atoms that act as ions. Okay, so our examples here are some things that 
in addition to the elements and their symbols, you're going to have to memorize the names along with the um, compound formula here and their sign. So you'll have to do some identification later on as we go through this. Hydroxide has a hydrogen and an oxygen, so that's kind of easy to remember the name. Um, and a few of these actually have a few hints that we can review here. Phosphate and carbonate, nitrate and sulfate all end in 8. And something that they all have in common here is that they also have an O attached at the end. And that's what gives us the 8 ending. And then if you look at the element that starts out the formula, that is the starting sound of the formula name. Okay, so the only two that are really weird here are cyanide and ammonia. And honestly, at this point, I don't have anything that I can say to help you remember it. So if any of you have some inspiration for me, please let me know. Um, so this ends our first video on how we find at ions and um, how we can identify them based on their location on the periodic table. Our second video is going to talk about how we form bonds between these ions. So please don't forget to watch that video and come into class ready to show me all your notes filled in.